Start the Christmas season by making elf slipper socks for all of your holiday helpers. Size to fit from toddler to adult, they are knit double thick for warmth and comfort. While the inner layer hugs the foot, the outer layer adds the iconic pointy toes and cuffs. Best of all, you can use any bulky or mid-gauge machine to knit them in just minutes. I chose 4-ply worsted weight acrylic yarn for easy washing. The companion pattern is available by following the link in the description below. But for now, let's begin. This is a Brother 270. First off, I'm going to set my tension at 7. And I'm going to set myself up to knit in both directions. And I do that on this machine by pushing my this lever to the knit position. I will be moving it to the hold position, which is by doing that, which means I'll be able to hold stitches when they're in the hold position. E-wrap 18 needles, leaving a 12-inch yarn tail for later seaming. Hang my cast on comb. And I'm going to knit across. Very good. And I'm going to knit three more rows. I'm going to set the carriage to hold so that it'll hold in both directions and I'm going to begin my short rowing. And I'm going to do that by pulling out the first needle closest to the carriage and then knitting across. Now if you can notice this put a wrap around that needle so I won't create holes. Now on the side closest to the carriage again I'm going to pull another one out and knit across again. So each row, put one more into hold position and then across. And I'm going to do this until I have six in work still. And Use your fingers and small weights to keep tension on the inside area where the working needles are. So now I have six in work still and the rest of them are out of work. So, I'm going to begin putting these back into work position, one at a time, on the side with the carriage. And I'm starting with the needle closest to the working needles. And I'm putting downward pressure with my hand right here. So I'm bringing everything back into work position. And so there I've just shaped my heel and I don't have holes on it because I had auto wrapped. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to knit 22 rows. That's 22. I'm not going to mark the exact last row. I'm going to mark the long, the long stitch on the edge. The last one is the knot. I'll need this information later. Now, we're going to begin short rowing yet again to work the toe of the lining. And it's the exact same process as before. And what I'm doing is I'm taking one stitch out of work into hold position on each side, alternating on the sides, just like before. There's my six stitches in work in the middle. So at this point, I'm going to begin bringing the stitches back into work. Exactly as I did before. The instep is worked by knitting 22 rows, just like we did on the bottom. However, because this is the lining, we're going to go to that first row and hang the edge stitch right on to the needles because that's why I marked it so I knew exactly where my it starts then from then on it's just the long stitches going down the sides and I'm going to knit two rows and what that does is it joins it so that's this stitch right here so I'm going to this one here I can take the markers out later and hang that one. 
So that one's already used, so you go down to this one here. And it does a nice seam on the lining. Pick up the next long loops on the edges and knit two rows. Repeat until the 22 rows of the instep are finished. Now we have just made the lining of the sock. I'm going to pick up my waist yarn, thread it up, and I'm just going to knit a few rows. So now we can just remove our lining from the machine. We're going to move our carriage back to the right. We're going to take our carriage out of hold and we're going to crank up our tension two full clicks. Is return to my cast on edge and with the purl side facing me I'm going to pick up each of the stitches along this side. Here's the one edge stitch, here's the other edge loop I should say. And right in the center, right there, is where I'm placing that eyelet tool. And what that does is puts it right in the center. When the 18 stitches of the cast on row are rehung, you will knit a total of four rows to start the back flap of the cuff. The first of these rows will later be picked up to close the flap. The ridge will act as the marker for this row. Since I already have a long yarn tail on each side, I will take advantage of the third row to weave in the newest yarn tail. Then I'll just knit the fourth row. Now I'm going to begin shaping the back cuff flap. And I do that by bringing out, putting my carriage in hold and bringing out the needle closest to the carriage just like I did before. It's a very repetitive pattern. But I'm going to bring it down to two needles in work this time. And now we begin the reverse shaping, which is bringing them back into work. And now they're all back in work. And I've just made a little pointy thing, which is the back of the cuff. See, see that? I remember that I was going to come back to this first row and that's why I wove this in on the third row. I'm going to come back to this very first row and I am going to pick up the stitches along here. And all I'm going to do is go across picking up the lower loop because it's right up next to that line that was caused by the cast on row. And at the end, I'm going to get that one and the little knot that's on the end. And those are my 18 stitches. I knit four rows first. One, two, three, four. So, put it back and hold. I'm going to use my weights to help me along here. I'm going to start short rowing again. Because it's the heel, it needs to match the heel of the lining. So I'm going to do it just like before and work it down to six stitches. So now on this row, I begin reverse shaping, which is bringing my needles back into work to do the other side of the heel. So now I have the other side of the heel finished. And so I don't have to connect it to anything. I've already seamed my lining. So all I have to do is knit 22 rows. Begin the shaping for the toe of the slipper in the same way as the heel, but short row until only four stitches are in work position. I'll meet you then. Okay, now this is where it gets interesting. I want to build up this toe, so I want to put two rows in here. On the side of the carriage, I'm going to wrap the end needle one more time and knit one row across the four. Then on this side, so that's the row one of the extra stitches. And then I'm going to wrap this one, making sure I don't get my gate pegs, on this side and knit one more row. Very good. Now I'm going to bring this stitch out and bring it down to two stitches just like before. 
that one across. That one auto wraps, so you don't have to worry about it. Bring that one out, auto wrap it. All right, now I want to do four more rows right at the tip. So, but just before, just as before, I'm going to wrap that end stitch each time. So this is row one. This is row two. This is row three. I'm wrapping that same end stitch. And this is row four. Now I have a point at this end of this toe. And see how it's piling up here? All right. Now I'm going to start bringing my stitches, my needles, back into work. So I'm going to bring this one in. And now this one's I'm moving it to upper work position because if I moved it to work position, everything would fall off this needle. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to knit one row and make sure that one knit off. And it did. Okay. Because there's a lot of stuff on here. On this side, I'm going to bring this one to upper work position and come back. But because I had two rows against four on the four working needles, I need to wrap this one one more time, knit one row without making any, putting anything back into work, and then do the same on this side. So that's my two extra rows on four working needles. Now, I've just created the point, and you'll see that in a minute. Now I can just work my normal returning stuff back to work one on each side all the way until I get all of my needles back in work position. Since I plan to use the yarn tails that I set aside to seam the instep to the bottom, all I need to do is knit 22 rows. I'll meet you then. Once the instep is complete, return to the stitches held by the waist yarn. With the knit side facing you, fold the waist knitting toward you to expose the tops of the stitches. Using your eyelet tool, lift each stitch onto the needles. Bring all the needles out to hold position to help these stitches knit off. Set the carriage to knit in both directions and knit two rows. Row. Row. Mark the ends of the second row. Then knit two more rows even. Begin short rowing just as you did before. Until two needles are in work position. Okay, there's our two. So now we bring it and start it back, bringing them back into work position. This is my marked row. So I am just going to pick up the lower loop of that row, not the one that has the two stitches on it, and I'm going to hang them right on to these needles. And there we go. All right, I'm going to bring them all out because I'm going to bind off at this point. But all I'm going to do is take my latch tool and I'm going to hook my hook right into the needle head and push it through both loops. Pick up both loops around my hook to start and now I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to do it relatively loose. I'm going to pick up the next two stitches off the next one, slip it through, pick up that loop. Now notice I'm trying to keep that loop going around the gate peg so that I have it keep it loose. Okay. So I'm picking up the two stitches and then pulling up against it and pulling through all three. Picking them up. Now I'm going slow. You can go a lot faster once you get this practiced. There's my last two and here's my pull through all those loops. Just pull it all the way through and lift the slipper off the machine. Find the front flap and you know it's the front flap because you just bound it off. That's on the inside. This is the lining which is on the inside. Tuck that through and push this toe 
into the toe. And you can tell the toe, it's really pointy. Tuck that in there and then take the heel and push the heel of the lining into the heel of the outer part. Set the carriage to knit in both directions. Push the right perk button in and set the tension to five. This is two full tensions tighter than the main tension and three full tensions tighter than the outer part of the slipper. Then with a contrasting color, E-wrap three needles and knit until the row counter reaches 140 for a small bow or 160 for a large bow. To bind off, just pop the three stitches off onto a threaded darning needle. Secure the end and weave it down the center of the cord. I like to make an overhand knot on each end, placing it as close to the end as possible. Insert the cord between the lining and the slipper. Slide it up to the ankle just under the cuff flaps. Tie the ends loosely on the outer edge to keep it in place while you sew the seams. Be aware that the placement of the bow determines the right and left slipper. When you sew the seam, leave a little opening to allow the cords to be adjusted. Make sure not to catch the cord while seaming. I hope you enjoyed making the elf slipper socks. Please take a moment to subscribe and ring the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos and events. Happy machine knitting!